Welcome to the world of social business. You hear a lot about social entrepreneurship, but not as frequently you hear the words social business. There is a lift similarity, but there is a lot of dissimilarity. So that's what I wanted to make it clear. When we talk about social entrepreneurship, this is about someone taking an initiative to solve a problem people are facing. So entrepreneurship or initiative taking is built into it for solving people's problem. It could be varieties of ways where these initiatives are taken. For example, it could be a charity program. People do it without charging any money, just giving it away. Someone needs food, I give you food. That's a social entrepreneurship. I was helping you. Someone needs a school. I built a school based on charity. Everything is free. So that's a social entrepreneurship. So social entrepreneurship could be purely charity-based programs. Or it could be a business programs. I set up a business. There is no transportation service between the village and the city. So I introduce a transportation service between the village and the city. And I make money. But I solve people's problem because they have to walk, they have to ride bicycles or whatever it is. It took a lot of time. Now they can use the buses. So I make money, I solve problem. So I'm a social entrepreneur. So these are two different kinds of things. One is a charity, one is a profit making, personal profit making enterprise. So the, both comes under the category of social entrepreneurship because someone, an entrepreneur or initiative taker, is trying to solve problems of the people. Then what about social business? Social business stands right in the middle of the two. It's neither charity, nor personal profit-taking business. It is a non-dividend company. It is a business, but not like the personal profit-making business. It's a business, but non-dividend business, meaning that entrepreneur who started this business doesn't want to make personal money out of it zero dividend. What he gets is the return of the money that he has invested. If I put $100,000 in this business, I get my $100,000 back after a few years. That's it. I cannot take any profit out of this business because the whole business is devoted to solving human problems. So it's a problem-solving company without expecting any dividend for yourself. You don't want to take any dividend. It's not that they don't give it to you, you don't want it. So it's a non-dividend company to solve human problems. I hope this clarifies both social entrepreneurship and social business. Social entrepreneurship could be charity, could be profit-making business, but social business is neither charity nor a personal profit-making business. It is a non-dividend business to solve human problems. I hope that clarifies the whole thing. I can st start a company like a um, solar energy company to bring electricity in remote villages with solar home system. I sell those solar home systems so that it becomes sustainable, so that I don't have to become a charity program. So I earn the money to cover, cover all my cost. Uh, but I don't want to make personal money. So that solar business company that uh, I'm talking about is a social business. We have a social business on solar energy. We call it Gramin Shakti, and it became very big. But nobody takes any profit out of it. It covers all its cost, but it provides solar home system to nearly 2 million households in Bangladesh today. It started in a very small way, but it grew and grew and became big. So this is an example of social business. There are many social businesses we have created. We have healthcare programs, eye care hospitals, same way. We don't want to make money, but we cover all the cost by charging people money for the services that we provide. We charge market price for the well-off people for eye care hospital. And then I, we give it a subsidized prices to the poor people. We make money from the rich people, then we cover the cost of the poor people, eye surgery. So that's our eye care hospital. But nobody takes any profit out of it from the eye care hospital. It covers its cost. So this is a social business example. We have created many of those social businesses. I hope 
it will be clear to you what is a social business and what is a social enterprise. How did I get involved with this, all this social business? Suddenly I thought about it and started doing it? No, not that way. It came step by step. I had no idea I would ever get involved with social business. I would talk about the social business. I coined this word social business. I designed this whole concept, but I didn't design it on the first day. I designed it long after I have done that. Then I said, ah, this could be another kind of business. We need a name for it. Then we gave a name, call it social business. How did I get involved with it? I was teaching in the university, teaching economics, and the country was going through terrible problems of famine, and I wanted to help people next door to the university campus. So I did a lot of little things to see if people are a little better than before. Then I discovered the loan sharking in the village, terrible loan sharking. So in order to solve the problem of loan sh victims of the loan sharks, what I did, I started giving loans myself. I said, you don't have to go to loan shark. You come to me, I give you the loans, and you don't have to be tortured by the loan sharks for that. So it became very popular, and it, I created a bank out of it, call it Grameen Bank or a village bank, to do the same, lending money to the poor people, particularly poor women. It grew big. We called it Grameen Bank. And Grameen Bank became a nationwide bank. The thing we were doing became known as microcredit. So that was my first experience on doing something for the poor people. And it became so big, I learned a lot of things from people. And then I saw a lot of other problems, health problems, education problems, children's problems, housing problems. And I wanted to help solving those problems. So what I did, I tried to create a business to solve it. Every time I see a problem, I create a business to solve it. And I created a lot of those businesses on housing, on education, on healthcare, on solar energy, uh, you name it. But they have a very remarkable characteristics, very special fever, uh, feature, because none of these companies provide profit to the owners. I don't make any profit out of these companies, any, none of the owners of the companies make any profit. But the company makes profit. Owners don't take the profit because they are dedicated to solving problems. Then I said, since it's a separate thing, it's not like the conventional business where you go into business to make a lot of money. The more money you make, more successful you are. In social business, you don't want to make money, not a penny, not a slightest part of the profit comes to you. But you are dedicated to solving problems. The more pro problems you solve, more people you reach out to, more better success you achieve from your business. So it's a non-dividend company to solve human problems. So I call them social business. I defined it as such, non-dividend company to solve human problems. So that's how I got into it. Now the social business became a very popular thing. Students love it. Businesses love it. We have joint ventures with big businesses, like we have joint ventures with Danone to produce a special kind of yogurt to solve the problem of of malnutrition. Danone doesn't want to make money out of it. We don't want to make money out of it. It's a joint venture. All we are, our interest is to solve the problem of malnutrition among the children. We have joint ventures with Veolia, water company, to bring water to the poor people in the villages who are not able to have clean water for themselves. So we created a company which brings clean water for villagers, and we charge a little money for that, for the price of that, cover the cost, and it solved the problem of clean water. And we have created joint ventures with Intel Corporation, with McCain, and several other companies. And many more companies are waiting to start their businesses with us as a joint venture. So this is how it goes. And many universities are teaching courses. Many young people are starting their own social businesses. Many companies want to start social business. Because it, it works such, a, such an efficient way. Because if you do something in charity, Charity money goes out, does a wonderful work, but it doesn't come back. You have only one time use of the charity money. But if you do the same thing in a social business way, social business money goes out, does the work, and come back. So you have the use of the same money over and over and over again. So it becomes very powerful. Same money can work so much, whereas in charity it can be done only once. So this is the power between charity and social business. 
But the conventional business, you are so busy making money, you forgot to solve problems of the people. Many conventional business don't care to solve problem. Some of them even create problems for the people. So that's another problem for the conventional business. We try to isolate the two and create a space between the two, and call it social business. How did I become an entrepreneur? I didn't know that I was an entrepreneur. I was not trying to be an entrepreneur. I was just trying to solve the problem that I see in front of me. And I was not interested what people will call me or what kind of category that I will belong to. I was just focusing on little things that I see. When you see pe problem at the people level, it looks so easy it's, and you, you are tempted to get in and do something. So that's what I did. But in the process, I started creating companies one after another. I became a kind of serial company makers. So I did lots and lots of companies, like more than 60 companies I created. All of them are devoted to solving problems. And now if you ask me, what are the features of the entrepreneurs? Who is an entrepreneur? I would say entrepreneur basically is someone who takes initiative. He sees something, he wants to do something to solve that problem. So if it, if it is there, you do that. Uh, if you want to make money, you create a business, so you become an entrepreneur because you want to do something. You are, an initiate, you are initiating a business to make money for yourself. So uh, in social business, you are an entrepreneur because you want to solve problems of the other people in a business way. So you are an entrepreneur. So anybody who takes an initiative is an entrepreneur. So this is what the entrepreneur is. And you can be an entrepreneur too. Or, but don't worry about the word entrepreneur. Just go and do something. If, if, you, if you like that you want to solve the problem in a certain way, go right ahead, like in a business, social business way, so you become an entrepreneur. Uh, you have to be sustainable. It runs. You don't fall into a uh, deficit all the time. Sometimes you get into trouble. You have to overcome trouble. So basically, it's a job of a go-getter. You get things done. That's what the entrepreneurs do. So you become a go-getter and look at the world, see what the problems are, and design something as a business to solve one of those problems. And you become an entrepreneur. Did it touch me, my life? Did it change my life in any way? Of course it did. Every time I do a little thing, it works. If it helps people, and they feel happy, I feel very happy. So that touches me all the time. The moment I see people feel happy because they had a problem, they never thought this could be solved, and I did something which made them solve that problem. Like take the case of solar energy. They had no electricity in the villages. They have only kerosene lamps. It's very difficult to do anything under kerosene lamp. And I thought about the idea of why don't we bring regular electricity by solar energy, by put a solar panel on the top of the roof and you have your solar energy and you get your solar electricity. And that's what I did. People are very happy. They have clean energy. They do everything at night. They can work, they can talk, they can spend, spend the time with their family. I feel happy. And they don't mind paying for it. And I cover my cost. It doesn't become a burden on me. I don't have to go and raise money for this. I just take loans, it's a business, How you invest in it, you get your money back. So that's how it becomes. And it, it's exciting. And if you do social business, you'll feel the same way too. I sometimes say, making money personally is a happiness. You make money, you make yourself happy. But making other people happy is a super happiness. And social business gives you super happiness. That's what I feel when I do something, when people get happy, I feel that happiness, super happiness. I invite you to taste that super happiness by doing social business. What is the future of social business? Well, you have to talk about what is the future of the existing business, the conventional business, the traditional business, where you make money by running business. They are running us into trouble. Lots of problems are created by the conventional businesses. One problem is the concentration of wealth. More, small number of people owning more and more wealth of the world. Somebody must have told you that 1% of 
of the population of the entire world owns 99% of the wealth of this whole world. 1% owning 99%. Why it happened? Because the conventional business pushed all this money towards the rich people. So everything goes from the bottom to the top. And top becomes very big, very heavy, very concentrated. Bottom becomes empty. So 99% of the people remain at the bottom. 1% owns everything. So that's the kind of problem that we face. And we created the climate problem, uh, risking the whole planet. Uh, we have carbonized the economy because we are greed-driven. Greed we want to make money for ourselves, don't care what happens to the planet, don't care what happens to the people. So these are built in. Poverty is created in the process, and this is a big problem. So when you leave people at the bottom unattended, uncared for, they get into a lot of trouble. So I'm not blaming all the businesses have done this, but the business as a whole has done this. You cannot escape from that. Concentration of wealth will continue, and the smaller and smaller number of people will be owning more and more wealth of the people. Large number of people, 99% of the people will have very little and very little every day as we go about. So this is the danger, the direction in which the conventional businesses are taking us. So we are bringing the social business, bringing the social business to solve the problem that we see around ourselves. We want to address the problem of wealth concentration. We want to solve the problem of poverty. We want to solve the problem of unemployment. We keep saying that unemployment is a very artificial issue developed by uh, the conventional business practices and so on. So we want to get rid of all those things. That's where the social business comes in. So as a result, as you see, as you create social business, as you feel that you can solve problems, it excites you. You can create a new world for yourself. Particularly young people love this idea that they can be in charge and create a world where there'll be no poverty, no unemployment, no carbonization, no, net, no emission, carbon emission, and destroying the world. So we want to focus on all those things. And that's why social business becoming wider and wider, more and more appeal. Hopefully, someday, today, the whole world is driven by selfishness driven businesses. Someday, gradually, step by step, the whole world will be di driven by selfless, dri selflessness driven businesses. That's the social business. Selfish business versus selfless business. Conventional business is a selfish business. Social business is a selfless business. So when selfless business become bigger, all the problems selfish business has created gradually will get solved. And we'll have a better world, a world that we'll be proud of. And that's a challenge that we all have. We have to get ready to get into that idea and proceed with that idea. What can you do? Well, you can do a lot. First of all, you are packed with unlimited potential, unlimited possibilities. You're not aware of it. You thought, oh, I'm struggling with my class assignments. I'm doing this. I'm finding it so difficult. Maybe. But inside of you, you have a lot of creative capacity. All you have to do is to unleash those creative capacity. Our environment doesn't allow us to unleash all our capacity. So you have to struggle to keep your space open so that you can unleash your creative capacity. One way, you look at the world and imagine what kind of world you want to see for yourself, an ideal world for you. Write down what are the things that you want to have in that ideal world. Once you have written down, you hang it on the wall. This is the kind of world we want. You want. And if you want it, it will happen because your mind will start working for that. Then your creative capacity will start coming up. So don't feel you are small. You are big. You are so big that you can change the whole world. I'm not taking, saying it in, in a lightly manner. I'm saying it very seriously. You can do that. All you need to do is to believe in yourself. Believe that you have the power to do that. In case you don't do it, your power will be wasted away. That will be a shame. Don't let your power get wasted away. Use it, make it happen. 
And when you want to make it happen, social business idea will be very helpful. You see, this idea can help you do the things that you wanted to do. That's why you know, try to know more about it and then get into action. Don't stay away from action. Jump at the action. Take the lead. Make it happen. And build a world that you want. That's the challenge for you.